is good all the time, don't forget it It's really not defined by the blessings, they don't get it I'm really not concerned about the numbers, I don't stress it I'm really just concerned about the Yo, hey people, how y'all doing? I hope you guys are doing great on this beautiful day Welcome to Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman If it's your first time tuning in, listen here, listen carefully My name is Petrina Baota and this is Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman of course. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope that you will enjoy this episode. In fact, no, wait, hold up. I know you'll enjoy this episode, right? And if you are a returning viewer, hi, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming right back onto the channel. I believe that you will enjoy this episode thoroughly because I'm continuing on the world um, series. Um, I know that last week we had a bit of a, you know, a pause, a bit of a break, you know, a bit of a time out. But today we are back and like I said, we are better than ever all right okay wait before we go anywhere please go on and do the most right now please like share subscribe and click on the notification bell so that next time i drop some heat you get that automatic notification yes okay let's get right into it so to start off this episode i actually just wanted to read you guys a scripture that i think um helped me quite a lot and uh, in my Christian walk and also I think it's gonna form a great basis a great foundation for the conversation that we are having today so um, I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna read it right it is in um, Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 to verses um, 21 so I'm just gonna read that whole chunk and listen here you're gonna get why I'm reading it as I continue with this episode so unga sabi unga worry just chill relax and uh, yeah open your bible um philippians um chapter 3 verses 12 to 21 let's get it it says i don't mean to say that i've already achieved these things or that i have already reached perfection but i press on to possess that perfection for which christ jesus um which christ jesus first possessed me no dear brothers and sisters i have not achieved it but I do focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward, looking on to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Let us who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe that God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress that we have already made. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are, there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. They are God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. There are so many points right here, but I'm not going to zoom into literally every single part of it because I just want to touch briefly on the significance of this scripture in us facing the world and even shaping our friendships. Here we are told by the Apostle Paul, I believe, that the race, that we are running a race. We are all part of a race, whether you want to believe it or not. This race you don't enter, you don't register for it. The minute you were born, you were entered into this race automatically. So we are in a race. We are in the race of our lives literally and so he's telling us that the race is here on earth but the prize is in heaven we are racing here on earth we are running here on earth um but the prize is a heavenly prize right and then he goes on to tell us that listen here I have not reached perfection. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I've achieved all. But what I'm saying is that I'm pressing towards this goal. The goal of making sure that I finish this race. Making sure that I end this race just as good as I've started it. And that is why it says that we must hold on to the progress which we have already made. Let's not recede. Let us not allow ourselves to get to a certain point where we are expected a certain point of growth. And then eventually we are backtracking you know what i'm saying it's like 10 steps forward and 28 steps back you know that is what he's saying we should not do hold on and make sure that you hold on to the press the progress that you have already made 
He goes on to say that, listen here, don't make your God your appetite. You know, and that is relating back to the, the series that I, I mean, the episode that I shared about idolatry. You know, don't make your, your life only about here on earth. It says here that they think only about this life on earth. And it goes on to say, to say that we are citizens of heaven. And that goes on to the first episode where I say that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Even the Bible emphasizes that, that we are in this world. But we are not of this world. We are citizens of heaven. We are held to a higher standard. We are just passing this this world right here. This life right here is just a bus stop. We are literally passing, guys. There is a greater goal in which we are going towards. And that right there, I think, is important when you consider the quality of the life that you live here on earth. Understanding that your goal does not end here on earth. Our life on earth literally is just the means to the end. The end which is our, you know, God, um, Jesus transforming our bodies, you know, and making them glorious bodies. That is the end. And so I think it's very important for us to understand this, you know, because I'll tell you how in my life I realized that I was different. I realized from a very young age, from the moment I decided that I want to save myself from marriage, I just knew that my life is different because television was not echoing the same sentiments I had around sex before marriage. Music was not echoing the same sentiments. My friends were not echoing the same sentiments. So I just knew that I am different. And that is why often I've struggled in finding a role model. Whenever they would ask, you know, in primary school, you'd have those speeches where they're like, okay, who is your role model? I literally would always lie because I, not that I'm saying that, you know, I'm perfect or whatever, even at that point, I mean, I wasn't perfect, but I'm just saying that at that point, I didn't find anyone who was echoing the same sentiments I had. And for example, it was my wanting to save myself from marriage. That was my beginning, you know, and no one was kind of echoing the same sentiments. There was no one out there saying, listen here, I also want to save myself from marriage. Or let me say there was no one that I was exposed to at that time that was saying that and so immediately i just knew that listen here Petri, you are gonna stand out like a pumple you know what i'm saying you are gonna stand out and i was just ready for it i was ready for it because i knew that the desire i had even though i didn't quite know you know where it's coming from and where it's gonna take me to but i just knew that this desire right here is not my own this seed was not planted by me and i, I just knew that i want to run with this you know and so um, i'm saying that because Knowing who you are is very important in understanding and identifying which people you allow yourself to be surrounded by. I think a lot of people, a lot of Christians are just allowing themselves to be surrounded by literally just anyone doing anything um, because you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. When you know who you are, you know where you're going. When you know where you're going, you'll know that you can't have certain people there because what? They will delay your progress. They will allow you to never reach that destination. So when you know who you are, you know your destination. When you know your destination, you'll know how to get there. And when you know how to get there, you'll know what to get rid of so that you do get there. Right? So for me, um, I, I, I thank God because, um, you know, yes, a majority of my life, I haven't really had friends that had the same sentiments I had, you know, um, I was very unequally yoked for majority of my life, but there were always those few that were there that really were supporting me in all that I was doing, you know, and so I really appreciated them, but i would always say that I'm so grateful for 2018 because when 2018 came, I met a group of amazing people who, you know, I really embraced them as my brothers and my sisters. They are not my friends. They really are my brothers and my sisters. Not only are they my brothers and my sisters in Christ, but those people are really always there for me and I met them in 2018 you know and so they I met them at church that was the other nice thing and the other nice thing is that not only did I just meet them at church but these were really people who were on fire for God because I have grown up in church um I have been in church and I've made friendships in church that would feed my sinful life and not allow me to let go of my sinful life I had friends from church who would go partying together on a Saturday after going to youth on a Friday. You know, I'm not throwing any shade or anything, but I'm just saying that that is what it is. Don't just think that just because you found these friends in church that these friends will lead you closer towards God. Sometimes those friends, yes, 
they are in the right environment but their heart is in the wrong posture their heart is just you know it's not there you understand because um I mean, and, I've, and i've said this before Jorge, even with relationships don't think just because you met this guy you met this girl in church that that person's heart is on fire for god there are a lot of people who fit church into their schedule but they do not fit god into their life so that means they'll be at church every sunday they'll be at youth every friday they'll go to home style during the week but god literally has no place in their life even though they make a place for church in their schedule there's a difference guys so that's what i'm that's what i'm saying you know that you should really analyze the type of friends that you have just like we were talking about music analyzing the type of music that you analyze is it promoting ungodly messages it's the same thing with friends um are they promoting ungodly messages and of course i'm not gonna say that listen here you shouldn't be you, you shouldn't you should only have friends that are christians and whatnot 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 um remember i said that there are things that are good for you but they're not beneficial for your walk that's how you need to evaluate things that some friends literally they are good those friends are not telling you you know to not go to church those church, those friends are not telling you to drink alcohol those friends are not telling you to harbor thoughts of lust but those friends are also not telling you to have faith in god those friends are also not telling you that you need to live a life that is worthy of your calling those friends are not telling you to establish who you are in christ those friends are not telling you to 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 live a purposeful life and to pursue the destiny that god god has upon your life so even though they are good for you they're not beneficial and so what beneficial means is that these people will contribute to your progress so even though these people are good for you they are not you know um influencing you to do anything bad but them not influencing you to do anything good means that you are also not progressing in their um in their company you know so what is the use really because those people are just filling up your contact list and they are filling up and occupying spaces in your heart and in your life that could be occupied by people that will actually be beneficial towards you people that actually drive you and push you towards your purpose and that is exactly what i appreciate about the kind of friends i have they're always holding me accountable and they're always driving me towards my purpose Petri, you said you're gonna do that you said you were gonna start your youtube channel when are you starting it you know it's been years right now you've been saying you're starting it Petri, you you said that you know what you are saving yourself for marriage so now why are you allowing yourselves to constantly watch these certain things you know that are bring up thoughts of lust and all of that within you. Petru, you broke up with that guy because he wanted to have sex with you. Why are you still entertaining him? Because clearly he hasn't changed, you know? And so what are you doing? You are putting yourself in danger constantly. So you need those friends who will hold you accountable, those friends who will hold you accountable, not only to themselves, but also to God, reminding you of those promises that you have made to God. And the nice thing about having friends like that is you can even open up about what God is doing in your life. You know, you don't have to kind of hold back on what you think that God is calling you to do in a certain season in your life but you can open up and say listen here God has called me to do this that and the third but friends who are not there in the same wavelength you will constantly have to draw back and and now who are you telling because friends are the people that you should be telling about but because you are allowing yourselves you're allowing people who have no value literally in your life to occupy places of significance you are depriving yourself of people that will actually come into your life and bring value so i'm gonna move swiftly along right there i think i laid a nice uh, i laid a nice kind of um introduction i laid a nice foundation for you and you know i want us to look up Upon, you know that that um basically what i'm saying is eliminate everything and anything that will harm your progress in the race that will harm your your your, your ability or your you or the possibility of you receiving your heavenly reward you know in the bible we see some bad friends we see jonah dab i've spoken about jonah dab before who convinced amnon to basically create the perfect crime scene for him to rape his sister you know we can all say that if jonah dab had not influenced amnon he probably wouldn't have raped to Tamar he literally wouldn't but Jonah Dab was there saying listen here my bro do this that and the third and definitely you will get your sister you need friends that are not gonna do that to you that are not gonna influence you towards the bad they're not that are not gonna allow you know that are not gonna give um your sinful thoughts any more of a footstool in your life because sometimes you know sin comes to you as a thought and you know the difference between someone who actually carries out the sin and not is how much of that sin you are giving you know time to occupy your mind and so when you have friends that are gonna lead you astray those friends are gonna allow those seeds of sin to grow in your life because every time they will be bringing those thoughts you know into your life okay just do it just why don't you just do it you know for example we can think about othello remember with othello okay i remember with what, what 
the, the husband and the wife. Remember that husband? I forgot. Make something. Make capula, No, make capula, No, capulet is from Romeo and Juliet. Make something, right? So his wife was constantly, you know, talking things into his life where he was thinking about this thing, but he wasn't probably going to carry it out. But his wife came, and that the wife was like the third voice right there, just giving more power to those bad thoughts in his life. So you need to be careful who you're allowing to have um, 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 uh, an opinion in your life because eventually listening to those people over and over will allow you to 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 bring those sinful thoughts to actual life you know they will bring those sinful thoughts they will give those th sinful thoughts a stage in your life and next thing those sinful thoughts will just be performing in front of your eyes you won't even know how why and and, and you know wh what happened how did i get you so you look at eve also and the serpent even though she was not friends with the serpent you know she gave the serpent time she gave the serpent an ear she listened to what he was saying until eventually she was convinced by what he was saying until eventually she acted on what he was saying so you know this goes to being unequally yoked you know we hear a lot about being unequally, unequally yoked when it comes to relationships but it also refers to friendships you know the acquaintances that you have them uh, you know it, it, the bible goes on to say you know in that scripture that what does light have you know what what business does light have doing with darkness you know it's the same thing in our lives that what business do you as a christian have you know what what business do you have with an atheist what business do you have with someone who's constantly talking against god and the church what business you have with them you know you go on you know that the bible says in titus i believe that you know how can two walk together unless they agree because you need to have a common destination in mind otherwise you both will be pulling each other in different direction and eventually the strongest one will pull you onto their side you know if you are not strong enough they will pull you towards their side so that is why it's just safer to have people who are you know who have a common cause who have a common purpose and a common goal as you you know it's not sometimes that our lives are meant to go in the same direction we don't all have to be having to be pastors but having people that have god as a in, a, in an important place in their life you know even though they go into music you go into being a pastor you know you guys both have a the same destination which is to glorify god and that means that everything that you do that person will help and influence you towards that common goal you go on we go on to read first corinthians 15 verses 33 1 Corinthians 15 verses 33, um, it says here that bad, okay, don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. You know, that is what it says right here. So basically it's telling us about people that are saying certain things. So it shows here that if you allow people to continue saying certain things in your life, you being there, you being in their company will eventually corrupt your good character. So you might be there, you might be serving God, you might be asking God to help you, and you might have a good character, but constantly putting yourself in an environment where you're allowing people's thoughts to influence your thoughts will eventually make your character fashioned after those conversations that you are having with them you know and eventually it will lead you astray you know so that is it right there you know allowing the world to shape God's standard in your life will always make you fail I've said this before that allowing the world so the world I'm even referring to those worldly friends friends rather allowing them to shape your thoughts you know and and shape God's standard in your life Life will always cause you to fail because their interests do not lie there guys so we go on to read the advantages of companionship you know the, okay wait i think i want to read the scripture right here in proverbs um it says like oh where are you where are you where are you it says here in proverbs 13 verses 20 it says walk with the wise and become wise associate with fools and get in trouble that is it right there you know they always say that if you want to be an eagle you know if you want to fly if you want to be if you are you know if an eagle is there you know chilling with chickens he's eventually going to think like chickens and walk like chickens when he's supposed to be flying you know so so if you want to really fly, you need to fly with eagles. You can't be an eagle chilling with chickens and expecting yourself to, 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 to come to the fullness of your potential. You will not because what you are surrounded by constantly, you will become influenced by and you will eventually become a product of, you know. So that is it right there. You know, you go on, to, we go on to see the advantages of um, companionship in Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 to 12. Um, oh my word. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, where are you? Okay, Ecclesiastes um, chapter um, 4 verses 9 to 12, it reads, 
um, two people are better than one for they can help each other succeed if one person fails the other can reach out and help but someone who falls alone is in real trouble likewise two people lying close together can keep each other warm but how can one be warm alone a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated but two can stand back to back and conquer three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken it is saying right here that there is benefits in companionship but remember that the benefits of those are only realized when both of you have a common purpose and a common goal we look at david and jonathan we see how their friendship was a friendship literally for the books because we see how jonathan he was connected to david he basically he connected david to his destiny even if it meant losing his own life so this was a friend who was saying you know what um I, I'm gonna even if it means losing my own life. I want you to be connected to your destiny I want God's purpose in your life to become fulfilled So that is what I'm saying that it's all about the benefits We're not saying use people But we are saying that if people are gonna occupy a space in your life They have to be bringing value to your life and that is that and that is how everything in life literally works Works rather you don't just buy a car because it looks nice But you look at the value that it would have in your life everything in life listen here don't don't be deceived everything in life is based on the value that it has you know so even your friendships make sure that they are bringing value into your life otherwise they will lead you astray they will derail you off of the purpose that God has for your life and it literally is not worth it I I'm so glad I was able to share this with you guys and I hope that you guys really learned so much and of course like I always say the future will always present these topics to us again and we'll be able to cover them again extensively but for today thank you so much for tuning in to Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman uh, please do the most right now please 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 go onto Facebook and like Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman also go onto Instagram at Young Christian Woman that is who we is who we are please go on and do the most right now guys please show me some love Love in these streets leave your comments below and share you know your opinion of what I've shared you know how has your experience been with your friendships you know how have you made sure that you have aligned yourself with the right people maybe you're struggling you know share your struggles because this is where we are this is where we're gonna help each other you know um, I'm gonna be that friend for you if you need right here so thank you so much for tuning into diary of a young black Christian woman until next next uh, that whoa I was on a I was on a roll. Anyways, until next week, it is bye from me, amigos. Enjoy your week. Bye. Hey guys, my name is Petrinia. Thank you so much for tuning in to Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman. Please make sure that you like, you comment, and you subscribe, and also click on the notification bell so that whenever I post, you get a notification automatically. And also, guys, please share so that we can get more people here. The more, the merrier, of course. And in your own time, please also go onto Facebook and like my page, Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman. Thank you so much, guys. God bless. Bye.